Okay, here's a new story that just came out. It's a little disturbing. It's about ancient Celtic runes. And uh, the headline of this is Viking symbols and runes may soon be banned by the Swedish government. Depictions of runes and Norse symbols such as Thor's hammer may soon be banned in Sweden, according to some sources. God knows why. Hate groups have been using many of these symbols for years, and there are stories circulating that the government is discussing whether the ancient symbols may be offending ethnic minorities. Oh, well, you don't want to ruin your heritage to appease third worlders that have moved into your country. I mean, when you, you know, when you're in Rome, do them as the Romans do, and so on. I mean, seriously, I mean, think about it. Uh, you, you wouldn't want to ruin your own heritage for that. If you're worried about offending ethnic minorities, you'd worry more about it offending your own populace. I'm, I'm quite certain of that if you had any logic. But that seems to be escaping a lot of these countries here lately. The runes and Norse symbols that may be banned, as RT reports, Swedish Justice Minister Morgan Johansson is currently researching if the banning of the ancient Norse symbols would deter hate groups. I think you're going to get a lot of people pissed off. And uh, it, that, it, it, it won't stand. You're, you're not supposed to ruin your heritage for... Um, other people. I mean, uh, they're not ruining their heritage for you in coming to you. They're going to keep their same Mayaya Muhammad thing and a flying horse from the Aryans and everything, right? The red-headed Muhammad, right? So, I mean, and he, he was a prophet, right? He wasn't a god or anything. That was a prophet. I mean, you know, peace be upon him or whatever. Rest in peace is what that really means, I guess. But uh, isn't he a prophet? like Ezekiel or Isaiah, he considers their most pr important prophet. He came at the end and told them a new thing, and they haven't had another one since, apparently. But, uh, yeah, that's an Abrahamic religion, though, that's had a extra prophet added on to it there at the end, it seems, right? But that's okay. That, that's okay. You can have your thing, but you can't ruin us when you try to have your thing. See, that's the freedom of religion, but the freedom of us having religion, too, is that we get to keep doing what we were doing before you got here. That we don't have to change when you come here. You should be the one trying to change, for you're leaving that culture and coming into this one for a reason. If you're not coming for a reason of leaving your culture somewhat and coming into this then surely you wouldn't be turning your culture against the culture that you're moving into. That would be disgusting, wouldn't it? Let's continue. According to the Gateway Pundit, much of the government's concern stems from the neo-Nazi groups, such as the Nordic Resistance Movement, using runes and their logos and associating the writing and symbols with messages of hate. In particular, the government is looking to ban the letter Tyr, or T, which is part of the runic alphabet. This same symbol is used by the neo-Nazis as their logo. I thought it was a swastika, because I mean, a T is not, let's see if I can find one in here. A T, that's a T, right there. That's a T. This is a S, looks like a Nazi S with a, you know, more like a lightning bolt. Oh, that's a Z, that's a lightning bolt. This is a F, here's a B, and yeah, it is a B. That looks kind of like an H with a bend, but that's an N. Uh, these letters, there's an R, here's an O, I think it, that's upside down, but that's the, that's the O model, and I think that was used in World War II, but uh, why would they want to do something like this? It's terrible. Voice of Europe explains that their official reason for banning the runes is that Nazis used some of them during the Second World War. For example, the Odal rune that means O, I just showed you that, and the Tyre Tiwaz rune that means T. Uh, they use the swastika, and the swastika goes from way back when, way back, 16,000 years ago, and mammoth bones and all kinds of stuff. Swastikas come from the Proto-Indo-Europeans that ran all this type of stuff. Of course, that's Aryans too, oh no, but that swastika is even found in Jewish synagogues and things, if you look close enough. And then again, their Jewish star is found in India. 
And their stuff is just symbolism that goes with a bunch of different people. Yeah, and people have taken a symbol, but now if somebody wants to take a symbol now, that's not cool. But these other people have taken a symbol. Is that... Oh, but that's okay, because it's not a hate thing. Well, no, it does cause problems, though, and then everybody has to cuckle to that because of the... Yeah, see? See, there's problems with all of this, but if we're going to accept some then do we accept all or no 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 you just do what you do boo and that's it why would European countries ruin their heritage for people moving in that's almost I can't understand the logic behind even the thought process here I don't know what's happened to Europe here lately but the proposed ban may also expand to include the other Norse symbols and traditional Viking jewelry, bearing the symbols such as Molnir, Thor's hammer, and the Valkanite, and the, and the Vegs Vizier. Why? So it's got the symbol, you know, that Led Zeppelin's got that symbol in their thing. If you look here, there's a bull god with his horns going on, and the hammer of Thor, and it doesn't really look like Molnir, like what we think of, with the stick and just the big flat end like a hammer, which is a symbol of actually forming iron you know uh, when you try to pull a sword out of a stone what you're really doing is smelting or in stones and then later hammering and pounding and making a oh snap that's pulling a sword from a stone but uh, if you look at this this looks a lot like the things we found in the Philippines and those chop weapons that they had with the lightning things on the back and so on and of course this does have to do with Thor and lightning and so on so funny how that all connects it's really closely closely related just like the proto-indo-european languages and a lot of the symbolism and the people that carried this for so many thousands of years aren't gonna sit and cuckle under because somebody else feels offended when they come to your country now that's no 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 imagine think about that Runes and the popular Norse symbols under the threat of ban. Well, runes have been used since at least 150 A.D. No, they go back farther than that. They remained in usage until about 1100 A.D. And they were the basis of the Old Norse language. So we have a heritage behind it. If you're going to keep up with Old Jewish, we're going to keep up with Old Norse. The most characteristic part of the language is the Elder Futhark and the oldest runic alphabet. Apart from their important role in writing, runes were also often used as protective symbols and have been found in artifacts carved in wood, bone, and stone. Even now, large rune stones covered in runic script can be found across Scandinavia. Yeah, you used to make symbols with your hands, too, when you said a certain thing. It's almost like that Mother Mary Hail of Grace when you cross yourself. Yeah, over, over the runes, uh, over the ages, runes have appeared in many different areas of life. Fortune tellers, people who follow esoteric practices, People with pagan beliefs, oh, let's not just call anybody except for the, the Bible pagan, are we? Let's call it just anything else. So are you going to call India pagan? Are you going to call, let's not do that to people. Let's just say that it's not biblical, so let's say it's a religion. It's just as equal as any of the other ones, although it seems like everybody's going towards that one religion. But that's all starting to have a little bit of an effect, too. Let's continue. Even now, large rune stones covered in runic script can be found across Scandinavia. So apart from their early role in early writing, runes were often used as protective symbols. And uh, yes, it's pretty neat. Uh, today, many people have a variation of these runes even in their homes today. And you have Celtic symbols and all kinds of stuff. The Bluetooth logo comes from the runic equivalent of the letters H and B put together. Uh, yeah, I didn't see a H a minute ago. Uh, we saw the B, though, and it kind of looks like a pointy B, two mountains, if you will. The initials of Harold Bluetooth, who was a Danish Viking uh, Age ruler. And so that's where they got the name of Bluetooth from, by the way. Isn't that neat? So, yeah, so here's an H, and there's the B, and then you put it together, and you get HB, and that's, that's Harold Bluetooth. So that's the Bluetooth nickname. Huh. As mentioned above, Thor's hammer, 
Now, Bluetooth, too. These people used to cut these ridges into their teeth, and they would take this blue dye and put it in their mouth and make their teeth look blue. And they painted blue over themselves. A lot of people in Celtics, it's all known and everything. As mentioned above, Thor's hammer, the Valknut, and the Vegasphere are the three Norse symbols in which may be banned. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, so let's, well uh, how, about, how about we ban them from using their symbols? Come on, people. This is about doy. I mean, it just strikes me. Thor's hammer named Molnir means lightning, and the Vikings used to believe that Thor's hammering caused the thunder and lightning during storms. Yeah, it's a storm god thing. It's the same guy that Baal is. That's the same guy that Yahweh shows up on Mount Sinai as a storm. That's the same storm god as Nergal. That's the same storm god that's around that whole area. That's Zeus. Yeah, and his father was Saturn. And, of course, that's L of your Bible and your Temple and everything. This is all there. God had a wife named Asherah. And Asherah is a star. A star. What star? Venus. And the Venus statues of the women and the Queen of Heaven. Come on, this goes back to like caveman crap now. And we're not going to start ruining an ancient heritage because people, I get offended. If you're offended about what hate groups are doing, target a hate group. Don't target a people's culture. Knock, knock. Who's there? D. The Valknut, also known as Hrungir's heart and the heart of Vala, Boromean triangles, and the heart of the slain was a Norse symbol for the death in a battle. It was sacred. It's the knot of the slain warrior, and it appears on funerary stone carvings as a representation of the afterlife in an ever-changing circle. And you're not going to ban that crap. It's like, uh, oh, we're going we're gonna to ban the, the flower of life or the cross. People used to believe that drawing the symbol in one stroke supposedly protected a person from evil spirits. Yeah, that's what I was telling you, like marking yourself like Mother Mary and all that type of stuff. Yeah, it's, it, it, and it's, fact, it's where that idea comes from. It's, it, and people had this idea. It's, it, it goes through so many of these cultures. Everybody, everybody's kicking that same song. It's got a little different flavor, but there's a lot of versions of that same song going on here. Hopefully I've showed y'all a lot of this here recently, but somebody over in Sweden needs to watch some of my vids. Vingasavir is a symbolic compass. The name can be translated from Icelandic as that which shows the way. It was a magical device which one used to help in sea navigation, a compass, where you could magnetize a piece of metal and put it onto water on a cork and it would float, but it would aim. And if you use that, and a medieval sextant, simplistic sextant type of device, knowing what it should have been versus what it is, you can work out where you are. So it's a magical device which was once used to help the sea and navigation. It was carved on vessels that were going out to sea in order to ensure their safe return. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things people do. Now we bust a bottle of wine on these things and stuff and so on. Uh, now we've got a symbol here of the uh, of the winds of the world almost concept and and if if you look you know uh, it's got tridents on the end of these things right on a lot of them there'll be tridents on the end of them and then there's symbols that make up that uh, I showed you the earliest language ever written and it's got these symbols in it too up here but then you see stuff that's oh that looks just like it comes that looks like a fleur de lay on its side but whenever it stood up straight that's a symbol that's from Carthaginians and so on too you can see this is a jet pillar but this looks like Tenant herself this this is this is it this is the Queen of Heaven off Carthage type of thing you know well let's see if we were living up there and we aim down yeah that's that way this is this way all these different things what are they gonna do this symbol too Vigasir one of the ice mag magical stabs oh really Backlash against the banning of Norse symbols. Well, many Swedish groups are fighting back against the proposed prohibition because they see the runes and Norse symbols as an important part of their shared history. I'll say, as the RT reports, the Nordic Asa community, the largest heathen religious group in Sweden, 
has spoken out against many governments and efforts to the police the Sweden's ancient heritage, arguing that prejudices and misunderstandings are best cured with knowledge and facts. Well, I would agree with that 100%. And let me tell you something. If you're going to refer to it as a heathen religion, then you're going to have a problem coming to grips with anybody who has any type of Celtic background, aren't you? Heathen? Are we back to that type of BS? Heathen, pagan, heathen, that's just, that's right, right. You're not going to call people in India pagan, and you're not going to call this that either. Sure, some people came in and called it pagan and took over with another religion now, but not all. And so now in a modern day, are we going to go back to this pagan? Are people going to start having pitchforks and little torches running around? What are we to make of this? The Swedish Constitution protects freedom of religion. Oh, so you're going to have to rework your crap to just to screw over your own heritage which could mean more problems as the Nordic Asa community, which organizes the Esartu, Esatru religion. Also, these symbols states that the band would wipe out part of its own history, culture, and beliefs, and their freedom of expression. Oh, wait, so you're willing to do that to your own people and your own heritage just because you offend people that have come here from third world countries. You're up in Sweden, for God's sakes, land of the Vikings, and the Swedish bikini team. You have ice and things that they may have never seen except for on a few mountaintops. What are they doing and what are you doing? Hmm. Yeah, Markle, 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 Markle. Also, use of these symbols states that the band would wipe out part of their own history, culture, and beliefs and our freedom of expression. A petition against the potential ban started by the Nordic Asa community has more than 14,000 signers as of Thursday. So apparently this is recent. And according to the Voice of Europe, there will also be a manifestation against the prohibition held outside of Parliament in Stockholm on Friday, May 24th. Huh. And so here's, here's ancient runes and stones that you may not know. Cur reading the cursed rune stones of Sweden. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, yeah, I'll look into that here in a little bit. Descendants of the Vikings. Survey shows about half of Brits wish they were descended from the Vikings, and many probably are. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, with that show coming out, Vikings, and everybody's seeing that, and Game of Thrones, and all that type of thing. It's reheritageizing a little bit of this feeling, and there was a whip of that whenever Robin Hood came out, and things like that too. It, uh, it's a way to invigorate your uh, culture keep your people pumping, get a cup of coffee back in your soul. A photograph showing contemporary Icelandic pagans. Here we go again. Just call out the name of their religion. Do not call it pagan. Just say contemporary Icelandic Asa. Why do you have to be that way? <coughs> Other concerns about the misappropriation of the runes and Norse symbols. Well, Viking enthusiasts in Sweden have also taken a stance against the misappropriation of ancient Norse symbols by the neo-Nazi groups. Somebody's name I ain't going to try to pronounce, an admin for Vikingar Matrasim, a Viking enthusiast network Facebook groups, has said Viking enthusiasts gets mistaken for racists and Nazis all the time and we're uncomfortable with that. I bet they got turned off here recently. Facebook went into a freakout here just a week or two ago. White nationalists don't get to reinvent that vi what Viking culture is. Um, yeah, I'll agree with that, but they can embrace it, and the more they understand it, the more they couldn't reinvent it for its still existence. Oh, snap. The misappropriation of Viking symbols and runes is not new for... For decade, far-right movements, including Nazi Germany itself, have adopted Viking iconography to further their goals, and which often link to Aryanism and racial purity. And uh, so, again, this is probably a backlash to what's going on. And uh, 
You know, uh, I don't know if Muslims want to breed with the Swedish bikini team, but I don't think the Swedish bikini team has a great idea on that. And so what is this all about? Well, racial purity, well, is there anything wrong? I mean, it is okay to be white, isn't it? I just, I just want to be sure that if it's okay to be Muslim, if it's okay to be Arabic, then it's definitely okay to be white. Yeah, and if they come to your land, then you definitely don't want to... You know, hey, look, if we were going to have Olympics there, we might take down a couple of signs or ask people politely to da-da-da just to make sure everything goes smoothly. But for common, everyday life, there's no way or reason that we would attempt to ruin our own heritage for people coming in. Whenever you go to London for the Olympics, I think that was extremely British. I think it was just a little bit... When they did the one that was in China, and Beijing and things, I that looked a, it looked a little oriental to me, and it didn't look like they turned it down a notch. So, what are we talking about here? People should be proud of their heritages. They all are when given a chance to show it, but if somebody shows it sometimes, oh, it's racist. Who says this? The people that aren't of the race of the area that are, what? Oh, look, we're not going to have a modern cuckle-cuckle freak-out, are we? A strong concern for many Viking enthusiasts is they will be confused with the racist groups when they share symbols. But even more worrying is that when a symbol becomes too closely connected with a racist movement, then it becomes theirs, like neo-Nazis, and now no one can use a uh, swastika. And again, they, those things go back 16,000 years or more. Mammoth bone stuff. Every culture that's surrounding them all around there has swastikas on. They were in North America, for Christ's sake. Navajo and people had them on their signs. We had them on state highway signs and things, and all those got taken down right after World War II. Why? Because it's a racist symbol. Are the Navajo racist? Are they Nazis? Listen. Oh, my God, people. Well, see, I studied symbolism, so anyhow, um, so symbols eventually belong to racists, and eventually it can be seen as form as inciting racial hatred to show a symbol. Then the symbol is removed from common cultural use. Uh, there's, yeah, there's your swastika thing, and we're not going to do that. We see that as a silly mistake now. Look up swastika. I've done a few videos about it just to clarify here. One recently, one a year and a half ago or so, there's one in my Aryan, a uh, few of my Aryan things where it shows this symbology going and that it's not, it's not something that's from World War II people in any way, shape, or form. That just because they stuck a sticker on them doesn't mean that now the people that have that sticker are racists. That's disgusting. Let's say I like smiley face, have a nice day. And some group pulls that off as a hate group going around shooting people to have a nice day on. So now no one can have a nice day anymore. Knock, knock. Who's there? Deer. Don't say deer who. The Viking Museum of Fotteviken in Scania, Sweden. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few other places in the big grass mounds and the built-ins off of it. It's incredible. You know, and, it, and it's got a heritage to it. And it's not just up in that one point right there, people. But the heritage of the people that were brushed upon with this and held this belief for thousands of years and a long, long way back uh, shouldn't be appropriate, misappropriated in any way. Let's look here. I mean, I don't know if I see any Muslims in the shot. That person's wearing a longer dress. Does it have a cowling on? I mean, generally you can tell them for that. Or do Muslims come to this country and start wearing normal clothes and blue jeans? Is this red-headed lady? Is, is that a Muslim? I'm not sure. I don't see any there, but who are we offending? Is it offensive to throw a fit in a country that has a heritage about their heritage? Is that offensive? Is it offensive to any of you that people want to ruin your heritage because other people said they were offended by yours? Does it offend you that they get offended by your heritage while trying to be in your country? Knock, knock. 